Justin's life, made shortly after his suicide in the late 90s. Because of my young age at the time, my dad had never allowed me to watch this before. This is a film about a man who had everything, looks, talent, money, who lost it all and died alone in shame. I discovered how my dad reacted in the media to Justin's coming out. In fact, he's come out publicly and said his sexual preferences. So now he'll have to suffer the consequences. But I wouldn't like to, to play or even get changed in the vicinity. That's just the way I feel. So if I'm like that, I'm sure the rest of the footballers are like that. It's disappointed me because I thought that he had more depth and more... More tolerance, I think, is the word, because we've been through so much together, especially as kids, we've been through so much, that I think that it's disappointed me because I thought he was better than that. Have I spoken to him? No, I haven't spoken to him. With John, Justin's star on the wane, I learned that he later fabricated stories about his sexual conquests to sell to the tabloids. But I was in a situation where I thought that this was uh, easy money because people com were convinced that I was involved. I have never, ever had any sexual... Concern. Four years later, in 1998, Justin was accused of sexually assaulting a 17-year-old boy in America. Distraught, he fled back to the UK. On May the 1st, Justin Fashionu hanged himself in a lock-up garage in London's East End. He'd found out that the police in Maryland had just issued a warrant for his... For the first time, I heard the suicide message my uncle wrote. Well, if anyone finds this note, hopefully I won't be around to see it. But let's begin at the beginning. What a start. Everything going so well. Then I felt that I was abandoned, left alone, without anybody. Give me a sec. Well, I think as a 10-year-old, rightly so, my family or my parents tried to protect me. So I don't think that I've been exposed, you know, in a while. And I know this might sound stupid and I'm 22, but... <laughs> it's destroyed my family. It's really destroyed my family. I'm just really upset that I wasn't there and that I wasn't... 22 back then because if I was 22 back then I don't know I'm not saying I could have changed everything but I think he only needed that one family member maybe or or two or three or someone or to help I don't know I shouldn't have ever felt alone and I think that's what most upset me whether he's gay or whether he's not gay he just shouldn't have been alone I now knew I would have to confront my dad about his disloyalty to Justin when I next saw him face to face. In the meantime, one of my many calls to footballers and clubs finally paid off. I was given an opportunity at last to ask some current professionals about the lack of openly gay players. I was invited down to training at championship club Millwall. Since it's famously one of the toughest clubs around, I was still a bit unsure how the lads would react to my questions. I tried to get a group discussion going, but a lot of the players were not keen to talk at all. Justin was my uncle, and basically we're just talking about homophobia in football. We're just kind of saying, you know, what you guys think. If one of your teammates came out gay, what would you think? You know, what would you say? The recent, like, 10, 13 years, no one has really come out apart from my uncle. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know if you want to do it, you know. So you got your player now? I don't know, I'm going to think about it. Yeah? But please think about it. You know, I've come in here, tried to approach five or six, and everyone's just like... 
But thankfully, some of the more senior members of the squad were up for it. What I really wanted to know is how they would react to a gay teammate. The lads are, 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 are so supportive in the dressing room, I don't think there'll be any problems um, within that sort of environment. Uh, I wouldn't have any problems with that whatsoever. Um, in my personal life, um, I've got a couple of friends um, back home in, in uh, Wilkshire and Gloucestershire that are, that are gay men. If, if a player did come out, I think they'd be happy if there was that sort of banter within the dressing room because it means that they'd be, they'd, they've been accepted within the dressing room. You know, if that's your, your preference, if you find men more attractive than, than women, then, then so be it. That's, like I say, it's just another part of what makes up your character and makes up the different characters that make up a dressing room. Why don't more players think like you? Players don't really want to come out and say and talk about homosexuality because they don't want to be sort of labelled to be sort of gay. There's this, this certain sort of stigma with, with being gay and it's, it's about putting that stigma to bed. Do you know any gay players? There's been a few suspicions of a couple of players over the years, but no, there's, I don't know any openly gay players. They say that one in ten men are gay. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, do you think in your team you have any gay members? Um. I couldn't honestly, I couldn't honestly answer that with, with you know, knowing for sure. I mean, obviously there is no one in our team that's, that's come out and, and said to any of us in private. How hard do you think it's going to be for me to find one? <laughs> um, I, I think you got your work cut out, I've got to be honest. To hear straight players publicly express positive words about accepting gay colleagues was a genuine revelation. From what I've heard from them, you know, I just really don't think that, that the teammates care. And I think it would be banter and they obviously would, you know, comment and from time to time say something. But I don't, I don't think it would be harmful, you know, like discrimination to call it that. And I'm kind of pleased because at least I know that if there was a gay player who wanted to be open, he could finally maybe come out and feel supported by his teammates. By now, word had spread around football that I was looking into why there are no publicly gay players. Contact was made with an assistant referee who was willing to talk publicly about being homosexual in the professional game. But his superiors later told us it was policy for match officials not to talk to the media about anything outside football during the season. He therefore felt he could not go ahead with our interview. I'm really frustrated, the fact that this guy actually wanted to come out. You know, he had decided, he had taken the choice that he wanted to come out. I had run into the brick wall of the football authorities. To try and make sense of this, I met up with one of Britain's loudest gay rights campaigners. Former NBA basketball star John Amici believes there is one underlying explanation for football's attitudes to homosexuality. Football in particular has got some very detailed problems. They're, you know, they're run by a group of straight, white, old men. Football is clearly not that comfortable with women in boardrooms. They're clearly not that comfortable with black people in management positions. And so, when it comes to gay people, I mean, that just blows their mind, I think. Homophobia happens in boardrooms. I've been in rooms with people who are talking about football players and whether they might be gay or not. And some of the things they say, it's like, it takes me back to being 11 years old. So, you would say, kind of, that football hasn't moved on from then? The real problem that I have with it is that they've got every resource. They've got near unlimited money. They've got the power to change this if they want to. My question is whether they want to. Do you personally know any gay players yourself? There are certainly some gay players in the league who talk about the fact that they have a reasonably open life. They may not be out to their manager in any kind of way that they've discussed it, but they, they are the kind of players who actually go to the parties of their teammates with their partner. So it's very, it's open in that sense. Uh, they just don't, haven't told the entire universe. So you're always thinking about this situation is comfortable, but what happens when I move? What happens if I play for, I won't say any names, but one of the more old school and successful managers who 
aren't that cool with newfangled stuff like people being who they are. I think it surprised me that there are, you know, gay players and they've come out to their teammates. But obviously the fact that players are comfortable to come out to their family members and teammates, it's obvious that there's another problem here then. The FA and the chairman and managers of teams are the ones who have the power to help change. I was building a clearer picture of all the conditions required for footballers to feel comfortable being openly homosexual. But I was soon reminded of everything my uncle Justin was denied here, when my dad got in touch to say he was passing through London. Driving towards my dad, I'm, I'm feeling a bit angry and maybe a bit upset as well. I don't really know what reaction he's going to have because obviously I've never spoken to my dad about the issue of Justin. I don't really agree with most of the things that he said about Justin at the time and in a way it almost feels like he's disowned his brother. So I'm just wondering now if he feels the same way. Oh, hi, baby. Hello, Daddy. How are you? Are you okay, you? darling? Come yeah, in, sweetie. Thank you. How are you? Come in now. Ooh. How was your trip? It's good, thank good? you. Good, good, When good. Justin came out publicly, can you see why some people would see your behaviour as being homophobic? I'm not homophobic. I never have been. But at the time, I was certainly cross with my brother. Certainly. But do you ever not think that he was confused, he was lost, and that he would have maybe liked the support of his family in order to face the reality that he was gay and wanted to share it with the whole world? Wonderful! Who gives a hoot? A rat's bottom, whether you're gay or not. Nobody cares! It was the way it came out. Cheap, dirty, horrible scandals. Day after day. Going on the front page saying that you've had sexual relationships with MPs, going in the newspapers saying that you have had a relationship with young boys or accusations. All these things were scandals. We, I'm sorry, we have a reputation, we have a name to protect. We're not all working to now be scandalized by one member of our family. But do you think that going on TV like you did and saying the things you did was the best way to handle it. Oh, yeah, some viewers will say, oh, look at Big Fashé, he's selfish. It, <clears throat> we're all selfish here. We were all selfish. Justin was selfish because to come out and not care or worry about anybody else and tell the world you were gay in a time when it was so hostile. What I did, I did what I thought was right for our family, our family, and myself. If you would do everything again, w mm. would, you, would you change anything you did? Hmm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Mistakes were made. It's okay, kiddo. It's okay. It's okay, darling. We miss him. It's okay. We move on. We move on. In Justin's suicide note, he does say that, you know, he makes emphasis of how hard it was for him to be gay. Do you feel that, you know, there was something more you could have done to help him in any way? We tried. As a family, we tried him all. I sleep at night wondering all the time, could I have done more? And I keep coming up with the answer, yes, I could have done more. Does that console me? Does that, no. Don't cry, darling. It's okay, darling. No more tears. 
We've cried for nearly two decades, Jesse. 